All right, folks, I'm Tom Downey. Alongside me is Mitchell Renz. As you see at the bottom of, this, of your screen there, use, has, use hashtag NFL to have your questions featured live on the show. We'll do some live Q&A now. So first up from Inspiring Munoz, what are the odds the Giants trade up into the top three? Historically speaking, quarterbacks go early and a team trades up for them. And if you're the Giants and you love a quarterback, you should make sure you get him at number three or number two or whatever. Here's the issue. There's been one. reports that they're going to stick with Eli, which I also could I could really see them maybe going up and get a Haskins or going up and get a Murray mm -hmm. and let Eli teach that young quarterback. Because if there is one quarterback who knows the New York Giants, it is Eli Manning. And yeah. I think Eli is 100% washed up. But, man... If they don't, if they stick with Eli again, I am going to get so frustrated because <laughs> that offense has so much talent, and Eli's noodle arm is just going to kill Yeah, I know. You it. don't like it. All right, nacho cheese, which sounds del delicious right now. Do you think franchising Clowney was a good move, Mitch? Yeah, I do. I think when you also look at the money, considering, like, realistically, at, you tell me Jadavion Clowney's getting 15 mil. Mm -hmm. That's really good, I think, for his market because he's a linebacker. Yeah, it brings it down, and maybe you can find a way to work out a long-term deal as well. Terrence Yoder asks, will the Falcons draft a running back? They took Ito Smith last year. I, d I would not be surprised round five, round six, round seven, that mid to late day three range. Yeah. They pulled the trigger again. They've done it back-to-back -back years. Yeah, but reports are that they do really like Ito Smith, and he's going to get more work. Now, obvious, Tevin Coleman's going to leave, I think, going to test the free agency market. Mm -hmm. Go sign elsewhere, but again, it's still Devonta Freeman. And I will say, I think the Falcons, even though they had a bad year, can mm -hmm. go a bunch of different ways because that team is actually pretty well put together. It's just mm -hmm. injuries just kill them. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. The offense should be really good again next year. And again, that, with that defensive side of the ball, they do plan on tagging Grady Jarrett. That's going to cost a significant amount of their cap space, which in the end, ties it all back in. I don't think you're going to see Tevin Coleman back in Atlanta. Yeah, and uh, I don't blame him. I think Tevin Coleman is an every down running back. All right, Anthony Meatball. I had meatballs last night for dinner. Will Demarcus Lawrence hold out if a deal is not made? Possibly. Uh, he has said he does not want to play on a second tag. In the end, I think they get a deal done, but he's going to hold off on his needed sh shoulder surgery until he does have a long-term deal. And the threat is he's not going to play on the franchise tag next year. If that's the case, either way, if it's not the case, pay the man. They need Give to him, him 20 to $21 million. He'll take it. Especially with all the it. other stuff going on right now for the Cowboys. He'll take it. <laughs> I think they're trying to juggle the, well, we got like eight different players to try and sign here, and they're just, I think once one signs, the rest will fall in line. And I think DeMarcus is that domino. He's the I top so. player on free agent market, and he deserves Was. to get paid. Because, yeah. yeah, best right. player. Caden G, who lands Landon Collins? If you missed it earlier, the report is that the Giants are not going to franchise tag Landon Collins, Dumb. which will let him hit the open market, and he is going to draw all kinds of interest, Mitch. So who are you thinking here? Well, I already did my top five teams for Landon Collins, and I did that one a little bit earlier. And, I mean, we've gone through some teams. I had the New York Giants as being the team because I was just like – Which could still be the case. Yes, because I was just like there's no way they'd be dumb. But let's say he doesn't go to the Giants – I think he could end up on the Colts because as soon as the report came out that the Giants and or that Collins cleaned out his locker, mm -hmm. real quick, the Colts were like, we're interested. And now every team's going to be interested in Atlanta Collins, yeah. but they also have one trump card, money. Yeah. And they got a lot of it. More Landon than Collins and Malik Hooker, sign me up. Two of my recent favorite safety prospects who have turned out quite well. Sign me up. I'm all in for you it. You just got hookers on the mind from this past weekend. Uh, absolutely not. Michael Ellis, Jay Houston, all day for the right price. There was a report that the Chiefs had cut Justin Houston and that they were trying to trade him. And now the report is maybe he hasn't been officially cut yet. Yep. But it'll be cut if they can't trade him, which I think makes sense. Either way, I suspect that these leaks here are solely in the interest to drum up trade value for Justin Houston. I mean, I love Justin Houston. However, that money, I mean, who's going to pay Justin Houston at this point? Yeah, what's the right price tag for Houston? I, th I think he could sign 10, 11, 12 million a year. Sure. But that's more than I think he'd get, that's more than he would get via the trade. Like, the, yep. that's the bigger base salary. He's set to make a 14.25 or $15 million I mean, They're kind of handcuffed with D Ford as well, you know what I mean? Like, and they got to pay Chris Jones, and they got to pay Patrick Mahomes, and they got to pay Tyreek Hill. <laughs> they can't afford everybody. Welcome to life in the NFL. Somebody's got to go. Big Red. 
Figure it out. All right, Tanner Mullins with a question for you, Mitchell. Uh -oh. In order with no trades, who do you think the Raiders will draft? So your top four big board. Oh, Tanner. Well, guess what, Tanner? How about this? <laughs> I'm actually going to be dropping a video tomorrow on the Raiders Report live. About 10 players that the Raiders could draft in the first round. I was going to do it today, but some other breaking news happened. And also, I'm going to be drinking six beers in six minutes tomorrow. And Tom's coming on the Raiders Report to uh, help me get through it. Going to be great. Bachelor party live on the Raiders Report. <laughs> Luke Miller, who do you think the Panthers could sign this offseason? It's a good question. Again, the problem that they're going to run into is they don't have the most cap space. Carolina right now is a little on the thin side. They're going to have about $15 million to operate with. Now, they can save guys. Yep. The big question is, A, do you re-sign Daryl Williams? B, what do, you, what do you do at center on the offensive line? What do you do at defensive end? All of a sudden, you got a lot of needs there. Maybe it's some cheap I think one of their guys. bigger needs that maybe not make an impact from a starting standpoint is they need to find a backup quarterback. And mm -hmm. I think some of these quarterbacks who maybe aren't some of the bigger name guys may end up being the backup to a Cam Newton who's also dealing with a shoulder injury. How about Ryan Tannehill as the backup to Cam Newton? I just hate Ryan Tannehill. But, yeah, but I guess a he's a pretty good backup. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. All right, from Craig Elliott, do you think Montez Sweat has moved himself into contention for the Raiders' number four pick? I, I still am not Montez Sweat top four in my mind. There's still a few other players that I would take. Like, I would rather have Devin White over Montez Sweat at number four. That's just me. But, I mean, De Montez Sweat has been a player that you and I have talked about for a while. I had Montez as one of the players that I loved two months ago. Mm -hmm. And you loved Montez Sweat, too. But we never thought, I think, that he would be a top five. Potential. He, as we'll have a combine video here in a minute, uh, he was a top 20 guy for me pre-combine. I think he has absolutely moved himself into consideration for top 10, top five. So uh, if there are no quarterbacks before that. I will say the one thing that the will combat. help him is Mayock and Gruden have said multiple times that mm -hmm. they like taking players from the senior bowl, and he absolutely tore up the senior bowl. They saw him there. Yeah. I think it makes quite a bit of sense there. All right, Preston Schmidt, who in your guys' opinion, what's the 2018 draft bust a year in? Oh, okay, so who's been the biggest draft bust a year in? Well, I, I mean, hmm. uh, Tremaine Edmonds and Rashad Penny. So I'll go with Rashad Penny. They didn't if do you, anything. If you would have told me the Seattle Seahawks would lead the NFL in rushing yards, I would have been like, shit. Rashad Penny, Penny probably had out. a pretty good year. Yeah. And yet he couldn't beat out Chris Carson, who rushed for 1,000 yards. So I mean, in the end, it's it's very much too early right now. Yeah. It's too early to really declare someone a bust. It's too early for the quarterbacks in particular because that takes a long time. It's One other guy, a top 40 pick. Look, Ronald Jones, I don't know what happened to him because oh. I liked him a lot coming out. He looked just lost. He was bad. He looked lost. He was so bad. Peyton Barber. Look like Herschel Walker compared to Ronald Jones. I, it just, it was surprising to me. That that one stunned me. That one in particular, one might just end up being wrong in the end. All right, Ethan Osorio, hopefully I got your name right. Ask Christian Wilkins to the Colts. I think it makes sense. I don't know if he's going to be there. If he is on the board, I think he's a very good fit in the Colts defense. I think he is a type of player that NFL teams and coaches are going to absolutely love. He's a great player on the field. He's a player that you want to build your locker room around. Yeah, he's going to be an unbelievably instant intelligent. Leader. He's yeah. he's a big body, and that's something that the Colts need for and that he's a type solid of defense. athlete too. I I am a big fan of Christian Wilkins. I think he goes round one, helped his stock out. Indianapolis would be a fantastic landing spot for him in the end. Some more draft questions here from Ferocious Film. Who should the Texans draft at number twenty three overall? It's simple. The best offensive lineman on the board. Doesn't matter which position, just take it. Yeah, it's probably a better answer. I was going to say, I mean, I, that's probably the Knowing only Houston, thing that they need. A cornerback. <laughs> that's what they'll do. Or safety if they let Matthew go. Nah, they drafted Justin Reed last year. So yeah, that's true. No, that's but true. I think it absolutely has to be an offense. I mean, you got to build around your most important yeah. player, which is Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Also, you need to figure out what you're going to do at running back. The, but the not, offensive not line enough. was not good last year. So I don't care if it's a left tackle or a right tackle. I don't care if Jonah Williams somehow falls to you or if it's a guard like Chris Lynch or Mel, even a center like Garrett Bradbury or whatever tackle still on the board could just. I doubt, I doubt Jawan Taylor's there, Cody Ford, whatever. Just take one and start him. And then build your offensive line afterwards. You're naming people, Tom. I know. Go follow him, draft stuff, walk going down. <laughs> All right, from Christian Meza, who will take DK, the monster wide receiver? 
I think any number of teams could strongly consider DK. I mean, where do you think guy. he's going to go? Like, I mean, I think he is a top ten pick. Wow, I mean, you run what a four three combine, one point six percent body fat. We'll get to DK more in depth with I mean, with the agility drills and how it wasn't the best, but he's if he's there at nine for Buffalo, do it. Oh. He is a great fit with Josh Allen. Oh. Just run deep. You run deep and fast. I'll throw it far and high. That offense works. At that point. Oh, Josh Allen.